Hey everyone, today is 17th episode and I know, guys, I know you are curious how was Tomasz week because you asked this in comment section, so... Tommy K, how was your week? Uh, <laughs> thank you for asking, hello everyone, uh, hello Chris, and uh, yeah, I just want to say that my week was awesome, was perfect, and I do not have nothing to complain about, I was looking for the great news for you, and we have a great number and you of did. them. Yes, you did, I did this. We have nine news today, guys, nine news. I think it's the biggest number we have ever had, so... What is first? Okay, uh, I know you're curious what's first, so let's start. As a first news, I want to speak about the capacitor, which is a nice replacement for the Cordova engine. And we found a very good optimization tool for SVGs for you guys. Third thing is about the CSS and the new way of how we can import it. And we're also gonna celebrate Bootstaff birthday. And next we will speak about new release of the React Native. Mongoose 6.0 and Cypress release 8.3.0 and what's new? SQL in the web. As a last thing, but the most exciting for us is a Node.js update. He's back after one week gap, so whoa, can't wait. Exactly. Okay guys, that's it. Let's see the intro and see you in 10 seconds. Welcome back to me. Let's start. What was the capacitor? Yes. Okay. So the first news capacitor, as I said, it's a nice replacement for the Cordova. So uh, it's gonna. I think everything is a nice replacement for Cordova, isn't it? <laughs> nice observation. Yes, uh, I cannot agree more. I know in the past we were working with the Cordova and with the Ionic, but those days it was like based on the Angular first version. So dark, dark days. Yeah, <laughs> it was really hard to work, especially on the performance for the app. But yeah, we did it uh, and we managed to do this with the success, so... <laughs> but uh, going back to the topic, Capacitor is a cross-platform API and a code execution layer that can be a replacement for the Cordova and it makes uh, really easy calls to the native SDKs. It works both for the iOS and for the Android. Uh, thanks to the Capacitor, you're able to write your own native plugins that can be uh, used in your front-end JavaScript app and then it will be transpiled to the uh, native functionalities. You can use the capacitor with the Ionic, so you will have all the UI layers, all the bricks you can use to build your app, or you can use the capacitor in a standalone mode. So it means that uh, you have to implement the native UI layer, like, you know, this uh, pieces that will connect the native layer with the front-end layer, you need to write it by your own, but a uh, capacitor will take care to run this code and, you know, translate to the native functionalities. So that's great. Um, basically, uh, this is it. This is it. There is a new version of capacitor. <laughs> that's interesting. Uh, I think everyone is curious uh, what they use for, uh, like, writing mobile applications today. Yes. So uh, nowadays at Frontend House and at Leaky Mobile, at, of course, at my own, I prefer to use uh, React Native as a great ecosystem and environment for working on the mobile apps. And yeah, I've got the biggest experience with React Native, to be honest. Me too, and uh, we went it a very nice application, so you can uh, check the comments and have a look, guys. Uh, it's a Daylab. Uh, Daylab is a mobile application, we did it in React Native, with the latest, latest trends and latest news from Frontend World. Uh, so it's like almost fulfillment for our uh, Frontend News podcast. Uh, so I strongly recommend you guys to have a look, download and use it. Uh, but I talking about better. mobile application, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think it's enough about uh, mobile applications today. Uh, so what was the next news? It was SVG, right? Yes, that's correct. Uh, SVG are really popular formats of uh, keeping the graphic, the images or anything connected with the graphic in your web apps or in your mobile apps. And especially if you want to scale that without any problem and uh, modify colors, you know, be able to customize the 
uh, the icons especially. And we received a new tool that works uh, with the Node.js. So it's more like, you know, the tooling for uh, for the backend or for um, some tasks execution, CLIs or something like that. That basically means that uh, the whole optimization uh, can be done in the backend and you can remove the unnecessary metadata, comments, hidden elements, or you can optimize some values that are uh, responsible for displaying the SVG. So, yeah. Yeah, that's good to know because I always do this manually and it makes a difference actually. So, yeah, good to know. Can you like connect this with, I don't know, any kind of builder, like npm package or whatever? Yes, uh, yes, we can do this. We can do this with the webpack or if you're still using it, you can uh, also use it with the gulp. I don't know if you still have this on your laptop. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, yeah, but webpack is a good choice, I believe. So thanks to that, you can work with your assets automatically. Okay, thank you so much. Nice explanation. Uh, so the third news is about CSS modules that made it to our list once again. Uh, yes, but this is a different type of uh, CSS modules. I just want to share the news that uh, the Microsoft and Google collaborate together uh, to create a new standard and uh, to define a new way of importing the CSS files into your apps. So instead of using, for example, Webpack as a middleware for uh, you know, taking the CSS from your uh, import and tr uh, transpile it to the uh, correct uh, links to be put into your head uh, in document or any other way of attaching the styles into your app, uh, you will be able to do this like a native functionality and you can import CSS files the same way as you're importing the JavaScript files and it won't require any middlewares and plugins to do that. You will be able to apply your CSS from the JavaScript files, starting from the uh, newest version of the Microsoft Edge and Chrome version 93. Yep, that's it. <laughs> What a detailed explanation. I'm very surprised this time. You always say, hey guys, check in the comments. But today you are very well prepared. Well done. Yes. Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Everything's in my head. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. Yeah, this time I'm actually curious how you're gonna sing happy birthday to our bootstrap. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy okay, I think that's <laughs> enough. <laughs> but you did it very well. I hope you guys like it. But yeah, maybe let's talk about some numbers. Yes, guys. Uh, before numbers, if you want to hear me once again when I'm singing or we dancing, don't, don't. No, <laughs> please no. leave a comment <laughs> under our video. Uh, if there will be like five comments under video and over 30 likes, I will dance and sing for especially for you guys. I promise. <laughs> it, it was brave. <laughs> I'm gonna Why not? <laughs> set up new, new accounts. Okay. <laughs> Why not? Why not? It will be fun. Let's take some fun. Of course. <laughs> but yeah, going back to the numbers and to the booster birthday, it's about 394 million downloads from the NPM since 2015. Wow. <laughs> Guys, it's over. And no, no, none of mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't, don't lie to us. I know that you were using Bootstrap in your project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So nothing will hide from me. We, exactly. know, we know too long together. <laughs> but yeah, over 131 million of these downloads occurred in 2020. So the famous and the fame of the Bootstrap uh, is expanding and, you know, it becomes Growing. more and more popular. Yeah. Yes, this tool really grows really fast and it's been using to build MVPs all over the world. But it, uh, that number means that it has been downloaded like 180,000 times per day over the last six years. Big numbers. <laughs> wow. Wow. Wow is the only word I can say. I mean, that's yeah. surprising. Good for you guys. Uh, I keep my fingers crossed for the next years. So yeah, I think let's smoothly jump into React Native. See, and again, update. we will speak about mobile apps. <laughs> but uh, let's come, uh, let's make the uh, long story short. 
and discuss like the meat of this topic. So uh, we received a new version of the React Native. Uh, it's a version 0.65 and it includes uh, some updates around um, dependency versions and uh, some gotchas around it, accessibility fixes and uh, some additions to, uh, to that. And the most updates were done around Hermes, which is a Facebook open source JavaScript virtual machine uh, that is optimized for the React Native. So uh, Hermes makes our code transpilation and compilation much faster uh, than the classic engine that was applied to the React Native. So all of these updates makes React Native better tool, but uh, about them, it's not like they include some breaking changes. For example, we received a new concurrent garbage collector uh, for the Hermes. Uh, we get an SEMA script internationalization API, which we were talking about in the previous episodes. And uh, Hermes on iOS now supports Apple M1 processors. So uh, if you have uh, new Apple laptops, you can work with the React Native without any middlewares or uh, any hacks. Do you have one? Yeah, so you can run uh, React Native apps and develop them on the newest Apple machines. That's great. Um, they get some improvements around the memory. And yeah, basically, I really encourage you to check all the descriptions on your own. Uh, links are in the comment section. I mean, in the description section, but we are looking for Let's your comments. Let's put them to comment. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think, yeah, that's it. We can move forward. Thank you so much for the ex detailed explanation. I'm wondering when they're going to release version 1.0. I mean, today it's like 0.65 and the entire world is using it, but whoa. When they gonna release like the final final? Right? I think we have like thirty five versions still. <laughs> <laughs> but to be honest, I'm not sure when they will release the version one point zero. Nobody knows. But you know a lot about Mongoose six point zero. What's in? Maybe not a lot, but we've been using Mongoose in the past. I remember. Uh, yeah, yeah. I use it today. Very cool too. Okay. Great. Uh, so Mongoose is a tool to work with the MongoDB and uh, we received a new version after 18 months of development and, you know, working all of all of these details, new features. We received a new version, which is 6.0, but without any breaking changes inside. They did some slightly updates around performance. They fixed some bugs and uh, make the whole code base using uh, you know the new features from the JavaScript. But about some numbers, uh, the Mongo 6 version includes uh, three, 457 commits. It means basically that includes a lot of code and improvements, uh, but you should not require any bigger actions to rewrite your current apps. And if you are using the fifth version of the Mongo's, uh, you don't have to worry about uh, rewriting your application. Okay, sounds good. Uh, I'm curious about version 6.0, but if something is perfect, probably there won't be no breaking changes anyway. So we have three news left. Two news left. Three. Three. Uh, three of them. Tomasz, let's make it quick because this time uh, it's me who has the daily <laughs> in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> so Cypress, Cypress release. Yes, so Cypress release 8.3.0, uh, where we received a lot of updates around uh, performance and some bug fixes. Cypress is a popular tool to write end-to-end -end tests, and I believe... I love end-to-end uh, -end tests. They are the best. Oh, yeah, you can observe what's going on in the browser, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Especially the, there is a big business value for them. So uh, guys, uh, we are specialized in end-to-end -end tests too at Frontend House and we use Cypress as an example of one of the tooling that, that is responsible for end-to-end -end tests. So yeah, if you have any questions about how to write end-to-end -end tests, leave a comment. Am I right? So you're an expert now. Yeah. Oh, yes. I'm surprised. <laughs> but uh, if you want to check the details. Uh, I know we do not have much time, so guys, check the link in the description and uh, go through all of the changes by your own. <laughs> yes, indeed. And let's jump into SQL. 
Uh, okay, uh, next news, we received a really nice tool uh, where we can use the SQL statements to work on the indexed database uh, in our web clients, uh, in, in web browser, sorry. Um, so it's called Absurd SQL. And it's uh, clearly based on the index. <laughs> it sounds like absurd, yes. <laughs> yes, but it's based on the index at DB. And uh, I know this is uh, really f maybe not funny, but it's interesting and uh, it's not something I can explain in easy way. But believe me or not, Absurd SQL is based on the index at DB, but it's 10 times faster than the index at DB. So I don't know how they done this, but. It's a really great boost for the performance and querying the data. Yeah, actually, I'm curious. Uh, I'm gonna give you that try. Uh, actually, never seen any like I don't know business use case. Uh, have you ever worked with Index TV? For some reason, I was using it in a app. I remember it was like three or four years ago. Uh, we were using IndexedDB to store some data inside the uh, client browser. There, there was no need to persist it on the server and we were okay if the user will clear this data. Uh, we just want to, you know, use it maybe as a cache layer, like to make uh, getting obtaining this data really, really, really fast without need of sending the request to the server. Uh, so yeah, this was used like more like a cache layer. Well, that sounds good, Tomasz. Uh, thank you for explanation. Uh, so let's jump quickly to the last news, which is, of course, Node.js update. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Node.js updates, guys, as always, we received the same bunch of fixes, performance improvements. Oh, my headphone is going out from my no ear. Worries. No worries. <laughs> we received uh, uh, some small pack of the same updates. I mean, you know, fixes, uh, improvements around performance uh, from the different uh, packages of the Node.js. And uh, I just want to say that the newest current release is the 16.7.0. So guys, if you are interested in using the newest version, the latest version of the Node.js, please update your apps. And that's it from today portion of news. Thank you, Tomasz. Very good explanation. Very good news today. I was happy to hear that uh, everything involves. Uh, we're gonna adjust the new technologies. It's amazing. Thank you. So, guys, follow our YouTube and our Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and everything. Follow everything. Follow us. Talk to us in comment section in our forums, like everywhere. And see you guys. See you guys in one week, two weeks. See you all the time. Bye. Boom.